At least my name will be my side. <laughs> the only one that I liked by UPND was K push it to be a fool. Oh, okay. Don't we care about that? Was like the theme. Why the you think I move for a that was for a to see what's a man did I move for a that was for a that was for a K push it to be a fool. <laughs> yeah, it's all nice, sir. That was a big cuff, man. I don't even know. Yeah. 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 I know. <laughs> that is one of them like a fancy fancy chan. <laughs> yeah. Pilato did a song for PF. Do you know? For UPN, do you know? Oh, he did? Yeah. He, he, what H-E-H-E-A-D-E-S-A, happened? H-E-H-E-A-D-E-S-A, D-E-S-A, D-E-S-A. Uh-huh. That's an odd song. It was just unpopular? Yeah, sort of. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're welcome to the show, Monday show. Um Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to say if you, if you saw what you went uh, through recording this. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh you're welcome. Uh if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit that bell and share. Mondays are for political discussions, Wednesdays uh, political commentary, rather. Wednesdays are for the educative segment and Fridays, Bible Talks. Uh, podcasts available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. 20 hours Central African time. Yeah, I'm here with Mr. Chofaya. Hey, Mr. Hello. Yeah, how are you doing, sir? I am the best. I'm the Padoko waka in your language. <laughs> Pachoko. <laughs> is it Pachoko or Padoko? How do you say Look it? Look at that. I think Doko is something like maybe a living thing or something. <laughs> a small living thing. <laughs> pachoko in Japan. I don't know when that could be wrong. <laughs> pachoko, Pachoko waka. Uh, pachoko, Pachoko. Uh-huh. Pachoko, Pachoko. Padoko, Padoko. Padoko, Padoko. Waka. Uh, wa- waka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only Tumbuka word I know for sure is Pachanya. Oh, Pachanya? Mm. Pachanya is heaven? I don't know. On top? On top or something uh, like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've always found Yanja to be Bundu. Oh, really? Yeah. I preferred Bemba. As a matter of fact, the Eastern languages, they all have one tone. Have you noticed? But Bemba and Jema and Vega Bundu, would you No, Bemba sounds a bit more jacked up. Yeah, you were. And they But in Yanja, how, say that same statement in Yanja. You were. And they so spoon. What do you think? <laughs> no, I think Bemba is still so good. Uh, uh, Nyanja, how do you say bad smell in Bemba? Akachena. Mm-hmm. Nyanja. Oh, well, it depends. It's a kachena. Because, you know, <laughs> Nyanja is not like this, what we call Nyanja. That's the correct. <laughs> this, this thing we call Nyanja. Well, it's like Lunyenye. Yeah, but it, it does sound uh, a little bit bundu, I think. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, because also Nyanja. You know that they, even the way you've said nyanja, yeah. is, that, nyanja. is that done? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? There's actually a tribe of nyanja. <laughs> I thought that's what the so Congolese it's not, say. It's not only the language to, or the dialect. When they're trying to get the NRSs, the Congolese are asked, mm. You and him to the bunch, and the nyanja boss. <laughs> How <laughs> uh, sorry, Okay, I will not say it. There are people that are watching this that might not be too amused by so that's the thing. Mm. They are asked, mm. but they give a different answer. <laughs> 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 uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, we have a number of things uh, lined up to discuss today on the show. Starting with President HH declares a drought 
or rather the drought, a national disaster. Uh, the cost of living has continued escalating. And then we'll discuss the fuel prices. I almost said <laughs> being increased, slashed. <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've got something uh, against I assume this is cheaper fuel. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, during this period of the UPND. <laughs> Then we'll discuss the police scrutinizing ECL's Zambians will rise or the people will rise statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about today's show? Will it be good? I'm looking forward to it, man. Looking forward? Yeah, I'm always looking forward to talking about people like Ed Galungu, (laughs) HH. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Yeah. What did I just do? No, keep talking, keep talking. (laughs) Actually, I'm looking forward to the show because... I just sent everything away. Oh, yeah, because (laughs) I want to apportion some blame here. You want to apportion blames, Uh eh? No, it is the commander-in-chief. HH himself. (laughs) (laughs) What did uh, Mugabe say about uh, freedom from speech and freedom of speech? Or after speech. Mm, Freedom. You have freedom Mm. of speech, Mm, but but no guarantee guarantee. of freedom (laughs) after speech. Was that Mugabe or it was Museveni? But aren't, anyway, all these aren't, people, aren't they the same leader? Aren't they the same leader? <laughs> <laughs> Why would we be inspired by such leaders? By the way, Mugabe was a very good guy, you know. Especially I, I actually the think in their day, and what, what. in their day, they were good guys. Um, yeah. Seven has definitely outlived his day. Uh, in 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 their mm. state house, yeah, in government, uh, yeah. Mm. I I hear now they make direct deposits to his account <laughs> from <laughs> for what from the central bank. <laughs> <laughs> for groceries. I don't think you can survive like that. <laughs> for groceries. Isn't that what happened in Angola? <laughs> yeah. You remember, Africa. You remember the, the, the daughter to, 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 to Mr. Dos Santos. Dos Santos. What was her name? Yeah. Isabella. Yeah, Isabella. Mm. Isn't that what happened? Where they... Anyway. <laughs> yeah. What he said. What you know he said. she's worth $20 billion. Eh? $20 billion? Yeah, but she can, she can never be declared richest woman. Oh. You know why, eh? But even with twenty billion dollars, she wouldn't be the richest woman. No, she she is <clears throat> in Africa. No, which other mm. woman has twenty billion dollars? We should have. Oh no, 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 Jeff Bezos' wife. Jeff Bezos' wife. Divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have someone else. We have Walmart, Although she she has like a museum or something. Mm. She's an American. Okay, she would be the richest African woman. Richest African. That, of course. Richest yeah. African person. Really? Yeah. No. Dangote, Dangote is fourteen billion. 14? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, then she would. She would. So, but guess why she's not richest? Because mm, they can't declare those things? Uh, those are government coffers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, why are we even saying Nivaki? <laughs> why, why are we even saying Nivaki? Because <laughs> the account is in her name. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, we have had a drought this year. At least we believe we've had one. And um, so funny enough, when we talked about the drought mm. last week, mm. it rained immediately after. Oh, yeah. Because also, uh, maybe <laughs> it rained on, on a Saturday there. Yeah. I don't know if it rained in some parts Wait, of the Wait, when you say Nkwala, mm. what do you mean? Nkwala, the traditional ceremony. Nchwala. <laughs> it's you guys here who call it Inchwala. Oh wow. Yeah, the owner is saying Kuala. Really? Yeah, but anyway, just after killing the black bull, I heard that it rained there. Mm. So yeah, many jamvur and jambo bwira kuno pangono pangono. So the bull brought the rains to Rosaka. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but by the way, uh, if I met Makamba praying for rains, blah 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 blah. If man would actually believe, but mm. do you know that a long time ago people used to do this? Pray to their gods. Yeah. Yeah. For why, why does it? Why and is it they, yeah, they used to go and pray for their gods. And on their way back, they would be soaked. It's, it seems we are now making it a thing to have a small five-minute Bible talks on Monday show. <laughs> oh, thank you. Bible talks. <laughs> yeah, because the topic, you're scratching a... You're scratching a niche. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, arousing you. Uh, exactly. Was that Please. the right way to use? Sorry. Uh, sounded a bit sexual, but yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, we know how passionate you are about these things. Uh, I know, I know. So, so not about the sexual thing, about the mm. <laughs> <laughs> Bible talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, catch Bible talks Fridays. Yeah. And if you like what you see, press that subscribe button. 
na ka notification bell even leave a like for this video so that more people would see it ciao that's what the video <laughs> dance is oh. <laughs> yeah oh yeah, yeah okay yeah. <laughs> like what you see yeah, yeah. <laughs> ciao <laughs> she was actually shooting another one recently oh yeah, yeah. Okay. so but just don't remove kaza kai kama imbika ka dog background Yaliba important thing. <laughs> leave that. Mati pela music. Yeah. Yeah. Editor in chief, you hear that? I make sure. Yeah. So, um drought, mm, the president had something to say. At least we have a speaking president now. As a servant of the people, we, I, we hereby declare the prolonged drought spell as a national disaster and emergency. Officially, we're declaring today. We shall channel more resources towards humanitarian relief purposes to ensure that our affected citizens do not go hungry. Very important. We shall look at importing additional electricity, including rationing electricity, as is necessary. Oh, yeah. So at least this is a plus. As you said, now we have a president who talks. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, you know, this is a very dire situation. Not president ari ufika kwa nchivulu. Uronga fwa yo granda, ama shivita ari fuma wili. Ari fuma, aranda fingarish ta threats. Ngani kumbinga ari fwa. Oro, if you are for president please, oh ko. Ko. If we team we team. The behavior ama me do kudare. Eh, ko. Yeah, uh, no, I want, I want 16. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, on a serious note, uh, it's good that we. I know that we just played uh, part of it. That was like uh, a few seconds, less than 40 seconds. Yeah. But we know that the, the president said a few things. I read the statement. Mm. Uh, he talked about the mitigation measures that the government are going to put in place. I thought. I hope I said mitigation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he spoke about <laughs> the mitigation measures that the government is putting in place. Uh, the immediate measures of course short term measures and as well as the long term measures mm. yeah so uh, for me if we have a leader who tells us to say he knows what is happening and also not only knowing but they are doing something about it mm. and he also comes out and informs us uh, it's a good thing yeah yeah because mm. this is a very serious situation ka he it mentioned is. in this uh, statement that uh, we are going to have uh, so we had like 2.2 million hectares planted yeah of maize Yeah. And we are going to have 1 million hectares getting destroyed because of the rains because of what is happening mm, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So that is very dire. That yeah. is 50%. Yeah, that's very serious. Of that, that puts us in a very serious uh, food security. I mm-hmm. hope we, our reserves are uh, uh, are doing well. Uh, last I so, last I checked our reserves are not able to feed us for the whole year. No. In fact, it was laughable that the minister last week, you know, we discussed this last week. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about what the minister said on the floor of parliament. Oh, yeah. He gave the figures, no, till in a shanshan metric <laughs> done, and this will only cover us for the next, I don't know, he said four months or oh, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, we actually discussed that. Yeah. yeah. And after the harvest season, we don't know. Uh, so I was very wa- I was very concerned that uh, <laughs> the minister of yeah. agriculture could come out like that. Yeah. No, very I, I vaguely and also saying that he doesn't know. To, to be honest, mm. there is also another issue we need to consider. Mm-hmm. Even if they did provide the necessary maize mm-hmm. that we would require, mm-hmm. they would also need to work on the economic aspect of it. Will people be able to afford it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because we, we, we may be looking at prices Mm. going up to 500 kwacha yes yes that's bag. true yeah. yes that's true so, and mm. of course it talks about uh, uh, the mitigation measures maybe economically yeah but yeah, they spoke we, of, i wonder uh, how that would happen because subsidies are not a no no f- for now yeah but we've got other s- facilities like social cash transfer which they talked about okay. they're going to like increase the catchment mm. which is a good thing mm. to uh, cushion the the burden on the the, the people that are uh, uh the less privileged sort of so yeah, to say yeah. yeah the ones that to be hit the most yeah yeah so i hope that uh, and you know the other thing is that uh, these are statements yeah he talked about a lot of things long term measures he talked about uh, enhancing the issue of uh, water harvest rain harvesting mm. rain water harvesting mm. and all those things uh he talked about uh, having <coughs> something <laughs> 
Yeah. So, uh, he, he's, he spoke about some long-term measures. He talked about uh, water harvesting, yeah. which a lot of people have already talked about mm. in the past. We've not seen it come to fruition. He talked about um, uh, having like a mixture of uh, uh, power generation sources mm. and not only hydro. That's in the long term. Yeah. Of course, in the short term, he talks about, uh, uh, of course, realigning the budget. He talks about uh, social cash transfer and uh, all those things. Yeah. Uh, he talked about uh, FRA escalating the sale of maize to the communities, which was actually said in the in the budget. Mm. Yeah, so the measures are there, we can hear them. But then the other thing is that uh, cucumber is one thing. Yeah. Doing is another. Yeah. I was I spent some time in the copper belt last week and uh, in Dora people were saying but uh, she promise. Well <laughs> under and but no results. <laughs> she promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know this sounds good and I should give it to him. Mm. As the president, at least this is what we want to see. Tuna president is in it with us. Mm. And also I feel like he was also pressured because of some of his past shenanigans. Mm. Because if we remember during when we had this situation during the PF. This guy came out and said, no, the president should declare a national disaster mm. and blah, blah, blah. So how to get external help? Of course, he talks about getting external help as well. So I feel like he was also pressured a bit mm. because of the things that he said in the past. Because now this situation looks worse than we had in the past. Yeah. 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 So he did the right thing to a yeah. great extent. I, I think, hope I that think he, he did. will be able to follow through because we have the statement. We have the pointers. So we'll come back to it. Uh, in other news, cost of living keeps escalating which is uh, clearly not strange to us at this point uh, the cost of living for a family of five in Lusaka has risen to 10307 uh, kwacha from 9555 um, kwacha recorded in january so uh, last month we we gave you not last month but january we gave you a report that was last month. It was last month for Last January. month we gave you a report on January. Mm. Um, and the increment is about 700 kwacha now. Uh, as at the cost of living. 700 kwacha is quite a steep amount. It's almost mm. some people's More salaries. Mm. Uh, it's some people's rentals. It's what some people live on mm. in a month. 700 kwacha is quite the steep amount to... Uh, to have increased. Yeah, so because by, that figure, seven something, as you are saying... Yeah. That's rounding it off. Yeah, that's eight percent. Yeah, eight percent of so the cost of living is increasing month by month by eight percent. Mm. That is a serious situation. That's that's steep. This is just a month. Yeah, eight percent. Yeah, could It may it may also just call generally for ingenuity on the on individual citizens' parts to find more ways of increasing their income. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. You could say that. Because already we're working for less. Yeah. Already in this yeah. country. Most of the people that are working, especially the people in government, your teachers, your not all teachers are great, of course. Your teachers, your doctors, your nurses, not all nurses are great, of course. Not all doctors are great. But these people are working more than they are getting paid. So yeah. the money that they are getting paid is not worth the kind of work that they are doing. Yeah. It's much less. Yeah. Yeah. And still when having increments from one full moon and mm -hmm. my increment <laughs> you my 5%. <laughs> not as much increment as the as the cost of living. Cost of living. Yeah. So yeah, we're in a dire situation. Yeah, speaking of cost of living, fuel on the other hand has taken a downturn. Uh it's been reduced for what we believe to be temporal, which I uh, temporal reasons, uh, uh, temporal measures rather, <coughs> we'll be back here next month. I have a feeling you don't like. We will uh, surely be back. We will surely be back here next so, month. So okay, maybe I should ask you, what's wrong with the reduction? What's what's itching you about the reduction? Yeah, that is not permanent. Ah, so okay, now I get your point. Mm. So you uh, you you've been disappointed it's, that it's a smoke, very high it's a smoke screen ah okay so w w what i'm trying to say is mm. the government has got the power mm. to create temporal illusions mm -hmm. uh like with the dollar mm -hmm. they can drop it mm -hmm. by five quarter mm, the central bank temporarily mm -hmm. never permanently so yeah when we talk about fuel let's come back here next month uh, and then we'll <laughs> i feel like you've got just a general disappointment that you are buying fuel at this price yeah i mean there was like a point so when, high there was a point when fuel was at 16 kwacha they had just increased it to 17 kwacha mm. under the pf's government mm. and oh, regime and 
there were threats of them increasing it to 20 kwacha. Mm. The country believed, they were convinced they wouldn't manage 20 kwacha fuel. <laughs> Let me not say they, we. We were convinced <laughs> for if fuel, I, I speak for myself. Let me not be like Mr. Lungo who... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm remembering. Who put all of us <laughs> in his rising statement. <laughs> People will rise. <laughs> People will rise <laughs> without having consulted us. <laughs> anyway, so we believed 20 kwacha would be too high. Mm. But now we've experienced the 5 kwacha. Mm. Well, we survived. Yeah. People were still driving. Yeah, I see where you're coming from, mm. my friend. And uh, it is justified. Yeah. So um, petrol has been increased has been reduced rather so used to saying increased <laughs> <laughs> has been reduced from 34.19 to 31.12 uh diesel from 32.15 to 28.78 that's about a four quarter close to four quarter reduction kerosene unless you have a color boy i don't know why you would want to buy <laughs> kerosene so the price has remained as it is and J jet a1 which is never our concern, by the way, <laughs> uh, has been reduced by about four quarter as well. So yeah, uh, that's that's what the, f the fuel reductions look like. I Trust me, I believe we'll be here back mm. next month. With an increase? With an increment. Yeah, and as you said about illusions. What, what, did, the, what did the vice president say? Reduced increase? To increase no. Oh, increase, increase to reduce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and about the illusions, you know, I've just been reminded that this came out the same day that the president declared that we are in in a state of emergency or not state of emergency. So are you, like we are are you facing a national disaster. Are you suggesting this was a shock absorber? Yes, <laughs> this was to make you feel better. Hey. Because mm, I, I know. Fuel your doula, drought situation, uh, disaster. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, yeah. crazy <laughs> anyway uh speaking of including all of us in statements the police <laughs> is not too amused by <laughs> a couple of words mr lungo said um yeah police say they are carefully examining and scrutinizing i had to add the word there and scrutinizing a statement made by former president edgar lungo yesterday former president edgar lungo said president hakainde hichilema may be forced to give up sooner rather than later as zambians will rise up will rise against him if police continue to behave in uncivil manner but in a statement issued on tuesday february 27 police spokesperson ray hamonga said the implications of such a statement is being assessed and appropriate legal actions may be taken the statement made by the former head of state mr edgar Chagualungu, indicating that people will rise is careful is under care for scrutiny the implications of such a statement is being assessed and appropriate legal actions may be taken he said meanwhile mr hamonga said the police station is a port mm. What did I just say? It's a protected place by Come law. On, man. <laughs> and any Come misconduct on. within its premises will not be tolerated. This is in response to yesterday's happenings in which four Patriotic Front members were detained for disorderly conduct. Come the actions on. taken by Kawata police were in accordance with the law. Uh, with the law. Mr. Rafael, ah, the punctuation here is so crazy. Mr. Rafael Nakachinda was released after due process while those unlawfully come camping at Kawata were rightfully arrested. Notably, the arrest of Mr. Emmanuel Mwamba and three others was executed lawfully, he said. Mr. Hamonga said police managed to confiscate three drums used by the alleged unruly crowd, which will serve as crucial evidence. He said a police station is not a playground for disorderly conduct and individuals engaging in illegal activities within its confines are liable to be arrested. All right, let's take a break <laughs> take That's a breather bro just too much reading you did well uh, viewer, viewers will you. definitely get bored yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um we reiterate the importance of respecting the law and maintaining order emphasizing that a police station is not a venue for disruptive behavior the police are committed to upholding the law and ensuring the safety and security of all citizens mr hamonga said yeah and a picture there of a funny gesture by mr 
Longo himself. <laughs> to me, it's the way this woman is looking at her. <laughs> at him, so yeah. I don't know the relationship that is there, yeah. but uh, whatever yeah. is there, you need have a be, woman that looks at you. Like I know that. you need to be in love. Yeah, to look at someone that way. I don't that's, know, about, yeah, that's, of course. That's such a passionate look. Yeah, we have a lot of people who are in love with Mr. Longo, by the way. You think so? Yes. Like, you don't think so? Like the general public? Yes. Why? <laughs> Why are you asking me? Oh, okay. They like him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Maybe because people might as well be in love with me. They People might as humble. well be in love with me. Are you with you? <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> I'm handsome. You're asking the same question. I'm handsome. Yeah, it could be that he's <laughs> handsome. It could be that they feel like he was a good leader. Yeah. It could be that they feel that he's a humble person. People like all sorts of things about people, bro. Yeah. Yeah, plus what we are going through. Ah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people like him. <laughs> so the, huge, that is why the the police takes seriously when he makes such statements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people listen to him. The said statements that Mr. Lungu made, where he included all of us without consulting. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> Take a look. So I'm telling the police that you hold your horses. Uh, the policemen should hold their horses and behave in a civil manner. Because what will happen is that we might precipitate a situation where President HH is forced to give up power sooner than later, before 2026. I'm saying so because people will rise. I'm saying so because people will rise. <laughs> Hold on for a moment. He did not say people might rise. He did not say some people will rise. He said... People will rise. I'm saying so because people will rise. He's suggesting that his statement is true, that indeed the president will leave power before 2026, and he justified it because people will rise. In short, Mr. Lungo is taking up the role of a prophet to tell us exactly what will happen. Anyway. I see why the police are scrutinizing <laughs> the statement. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, first of all, this was a long... So it was about 10 minutes. Yeah. More than 10 minutes anyway. Yeah. His address. Uh, it's quite funny and uh, interesting even that uh, Ed Galungu is coming and saying the behavior of the police is what this, is this <laughs> and that. Uh, because of the behavior of the police, people rise. Mm. I mean, I'm at pains, you know, to listen to Ed Galungu saying this. Yeah. Yeah, because this... This is how hypocrisy looks like. Yeah, exactly. This is hypocrisy at its best. No, we're almost beginning to resemble a hippo. <laughs> no, no, please don't. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> that was meant for Mr. Kambui. It's a, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah. You know, during Ed Galungu's time, we saw that the way that we saw the way that the police conducted themselves. Mm. It's during Ed Galungu's time that we saw politically motivated killings. Yeah. We saw Nsamansama getting killed. Mm. We saw Joseph Kaundake getting killed mm. senselessly because of politics. Apashiri. Yes. Mm. Just because they wanted uh, to show HH who is the boss. Yeah. The police were sent there and they ended up killing people. Yeah. I mean, we can go on and on on what the police have done, which would have caused people to rise in inverted commas, as yeah. they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... He's not the right person to say this. And also, you see, it is something that uh, should teach even, especially, actually, this is a lesson to the incumbent, yeah. the people who are in government now. Mm. They should understand that if they create monsters, which they are doing, by the way, mm. I'm not saying that the UPND, what they're doing is right. Mm. They are abusing the police, mm. much like the PF, the way they started. This is what, what part of the UPND, what, what abuse is going on with the police? Okay. So first of all, uh, it is hard right now. I don't know if there's anyone who's gotten a permi permission to protest, mm -hmm. to have public protest. We had the youths who wanted to protest on that day of prayer and fasting and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And they were cornered by the police. Mm. They went there, they got permission, the police said, no, you can't do it. But they were cornered. Mm. We've seen how the police have meddled in the matters of the patriotic front. Mm. Yeah. So we are seeing this abuse happening even now. Mm. So the people who are in government now should understand that they will not be there forever. 
Yeah. And one time they might be on the receiving end. Yeah. I'm not saying we should weaponize the police. What I'm saying is these people should learn that what you do when you're in government, it might come back to bite you. Now these chickens are coming home to roost. Mm. Ed Galungu created uh, uh, this police service that was sort of biased and partisan, you know, mm. everything to do with the opposition. They want to say no. They want to tear gas them. They want to shoot them. Mm. And now it's the same thing that is happening. Mm. So these guys who are currently in government should learn that the same thing that they are doing could happen to them. Yeah. And they'll be creating a very vicious cycle. And they may not have a JJ to <laughs> walk into Central Police with his friends. <laughs> yeah, I can even do that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, my point is that mm. Ed Galungo already messed up. He's not the person to be saying this. Of course, we are all seeing that the police are not conducting themselves in uh, the manner that they are supposed to conduct themselves. They are not being fair. They are being biased. Yeah. Yeah. But still. <laughs> Did you see how serious he was in the video? By yes. The way? <laughs> I think, you know what I think? I think he should come and say, I'm sorry, Mwema Zambians, for the way that we conducted ourselves the, way, the time that we were in government. Mm. For the way that we abused the police, we are very sorry. Mm. But please. Look at what is happening to us. Also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because right now it's like more like playing the sympathy they, card. They're doing unto us. That's what made him win in the first place. Where, <laughs> the sympathy card, right? Yeah. They are doing unto us. He should come and say, they are doing unto us as we did unto them. So, yes. but uh, we have learned. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's what he should say. Uh -huh. Now, let us see what the police did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sounds like gunshots. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like gunshots. It sounded like gunshots, eh? I just yeah. saw people come. We, we are not laughing at the gunshots part, by the way. We're just looking at something else that happened here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just saw people si who were seated comfortably. The Emmanuel Mwambas of this world, scampering. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I, and I saw him just like, was it two days ago? Okay. Yeah. Mm, and he looked at me like, mm. I know you. Oh, I, I know you. <laughs> oh, uh, one guy was celebrity man. I almost told him, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell him now in case he's oh, watching. Sir, we know you watch. <laughs> subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share. Sir, we also know you are inspired and you started a show like ours. <laughs> um, you can leave in the comments how you love the show. And how you're looking forward to the next one. Yeah. And also just express your gratitude for us putting you in our episode. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now on to serious, more serious issues. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the police, you can see from this video that uh, there's some confusion there. Yeah. You can see that uh, the police are not conducting themselves in the way that they're so they supposed to conduct themselves. <laughs> if you look at the video carefully, yeah. there's a police woman who's actually running. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. It's like yeah, she was there to man the situation to make sure that the, the, the PF guys are in order. And then she didn't know what was coming. Until she got shocked. Ah, and she started running. <laughs> are those gunshots? <laughs> The police was shocked. Yeah. Are those gunshots? Imagine what it would be like if they had to report, oh, there were four people who died and two of them were police yeah. officers. I can't even imagine it. That would be such an embarrassment. Yes. The police had to run. Yeah. So it shows you how bad this issue of using the police for political battles is. Mm. Because I don't know if even you remember. Even they are shocked. <laughs> yes. I, I previously mentioned an incident which I'll keep on mentioning, actually. Mm. Then Samansa and Joseph Kaunda killings. May their souls rest in peace. Exactly. Mm. During that time, uh, I don't know. We You are saying we reviewed a video about that. I don't remember. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So there was. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Yeah. So I there was. I said that in the previous, but go on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there was uh, there were videos taken because you know this was a public event yeah. and the media was there. Mm. So these guys were sort of confined to one place, mm. and then the police was around them in riot gear and everything. Mm. Uh, 
And this was, by the way, this is the time of Ed Galung when he was a president. Mm. This when HH was uh, was invited to the police. The the, the Frank Tayali. The day yes, Frank the one Tayali that he was, was pointed with a gun that the, same day. Nah, the day he was traumatized. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that you should get my five hundred thousand. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. That same day. Yeah. So what happened is that there was this vehicle that came, this white vehicle. That's where the shooters came from, by the way. Mm. They come a white Land Cruiser. It came and parked right in front of their fellow policemen yeah. and women. Because that's where also the journalists were. So we could see this footage clearly. Yeah. They came and parked there and they started firing. Some of them were firing those tear gas yeah. uh, canisters. And then these people, the, the other police, they started running. When I'm with most of them are journalists. Yeah. I know this because the journalists, they didn't, they didn't switch off their cameras when they were running. Yeah. The police started, Anichan, the police themselves were asking, those who were there. They were afraid of a stray bullet. Yes. The, po- the police. Yes. One day, the like, like, police has been caught up. Hey, I know. Uh, yeah. That would be so bad. Yeah. So this shows you the level of unprofessionalism in the police. Mm. The, the level of biasness. Mm. Yeah. The level of unfairness. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, if uh, uh, UPND, they are not learning, they keep on doing this. I can assure them this will happen to them. That uh, we can assure you that lessons in Zambia don't end. <laughs> ah, lessons in Zambia, they don't end. Yeah. My, one of my friends once said that in Zambia, you can think you're a tire. Pressure doesn't end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know so, every, you know, every government is learning the same lesson. Because yeah, so they are in power now. Y- yeah? Here's the thing. You nip. Mm-hmm. Abused the police mm-hmm. in their own ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, MMD mm-hmm. abused the police in their own ways. Yes. PF even worse. Even worse. Mm-hmm. The the UPND is following through yeah, the footsteps. The story didn't change. Yes. It's, it's a system they've, they've they've created that has been created from the first governments mm-hmm. that that when they get into power they realize oh this is how it works, so they just make use of it. I think. Yeah, you could be right, actually. Yeah. Yeah, but then uh, we need leaders to change the status quo. Exactly. Yeah, so if the UPND continue on this trajectory, it will happen to them, as I said. This is the point where Fred Member says, if you vote me president, Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so, you know, it's it's, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. Ed Galungo and his government were abusing the police. Now they're out of power. The police is being abused to abuse them. Mm. Yeah, so it's a vicious cycle. That's it. And you know, the UPND have the opportunity to stop it. Right now, they've lost almost three years. Yeah. No, remain- no, don't worry. When they watch this, this episode, they'll stop. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they've, they've sort of wasted three years. Yeah. Because right now, we don't have a different perception about the police. Not really. Yeah, we know that the police will favor those in the ruling part. Yeah. The police will stop each and everyone who's trying to say things that are against the ruling party. Mm. So they are doing it again. Maybe it defines the function of the police in the country. Anyway, uh, Mr. Lungu... Yeah, but you know, that is sad because the police, these are professionals who in these kind of situations when there are politics involved, because uh, we are free in Zambia here. Yeah. Everyone has got the freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of assembly. So in situation like this, the police is supposed to be the ref. Mm. Now, if the police, the ref, is siding with one party, then that's a very serious problem. Yeah. 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 Mr. Lungu did not have kind words uh, after, obviously, his people were <laughs> not treated too kindly. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Us, we want to tear us, we want to shoot us. You can go ahead and do that. Okay. We are citizens of this country. Um, the, fact that, the fact that I'm poor prison there and making a list. Citizen, this You are former president. Former president, you think you should come? Yeah, Mr. Given Winder looks lost. But <laughs> <laughs> former president, you think you call? By the way, I like the the to my songs. I know. Yeah. I don't like the PF. I should say. Yeah. I don't like them so much. Like. I don't just want to use the word hate. Yeah. I don't like the PF. And if I had it my way, <laughs> all these politicians in this picture would have been obliterated from Is it politics. The PF you don't like or the current crop or rather what what can we say? Don't and they the PF. The Do we have any other PF? Was there ever a crop of PF you liked? Yes. So if there's a new crop of PF, would you like So it it, it were it, 
it's not like it was a crook, but it was their principles and they stood on them, which mm. I believed in. But that those principles came with a group of people. Yes. And they went with the group of people. Well, some of them are still there and they're doing rubbish things, like Ed Galungu. <laughs> yeah, when we talk about the group of people, we're talking about two. Michael Sutt and Guy Scott. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> They are the ones who are the principals. When they left, they left to the principals. Oh, yeah, you can say that. But yet, during that time, we had people like Chimbakambu. Chimbakambu was a very powerful person. When, he had when they neck. were in opposition. When he had a what? Neck. Yeah. Go <laughs> <laughs> Chimbakambu was very powerful. Winter yeah. Kabimba was very powerful. These are people who could speak for Zambians. Mm. Ed Galungu was very powerful. Mm. Mao Samba. Don't forget that Winter Kabimba was very powerful. Was <laughs> was what? <laughs> was fired as Sata's last, last act. Uh, yes, but it wasn't really like Sata was. Uh, uh, I I don't want to to implicate myself. Sata was sort of unconscious <laughs> when those decisions were being made. In fact, it's not Sata who made those decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Because anyway, it's a long story, and there are a lot of allegations. Allegedly, everything he has said, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, first of all, to Manimbo, Nisaiba, we can book in our cards. I got a face card because we're never. Ati nani wale te minga da te ma fido kuenda we no muzi donga ni no chesu. All right, nice all right. Well. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> on a serious note, where's the decorum that comes with? Uh, being former head of state. Mm. Ed Galungu right now is not carrying himself as a former head of state. No. I mean, I don't think that the things that he's doing are respectful. Mm. As a former head of state, how can you be saying, if you're a former head of state, you call. <laughs> 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 Reminds me of Zambian mothers. Mommy, I'm hungry, you call. You call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this, ki- this, showed, this shows you the kind of leader that we had mm. in the top office. Mm. This is the kind of leader that we had. Mm. He was quiet because the only things that he has to say don't make a lot of sense. No, but sir, the prices of fuel will cough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, to a great extent, Sir, this is to standa- me, this is tantamount to embezzlement will cough. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, to me, I think... Uh, Ed Galungu is not a good leader. I've said this several times on this show. Yeah. Ed Galungu is not a good leader. And uh, nah, no, we have a lot to do it. Oh. Should they come back? <laughs> <laughs> and they are so bad. <laughs> and you know. Right now, Emmanuel Mamba is taking notes. <laughs> ah. And our names. Ah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, that's what you say. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he's not even respecting himself, Ed Galungu. Yeah, a former head of state. Right now, we are supposed to be a state man, and it's a pity we only have one surviving former head of state. Yeah, you know that uh, for for us to have a peace, peaceful tran eh? for <laughs> us for us Kutitinka in a peaceful transition. Yeah, uh, from the PF to the UPND, you know, Rupia Banda played a major role. He did. That's why he caught them in that meeting and mm. all those things. Mm. Now, Ed Galungo, the one that we have now. Mm. Is he able to play such a role? <laughs> How will he facilitate handing over of power when he's the one at the other end? No, let's let's he's pretend he's not. To, he's trying to be the one at the other end, rather. So let's let's pretend he's not the one at the other end. Mm. Let's say HH loses elections to maybe Fred maybe. Yeah. Hypothetically, mm. I wouldn't want that. Let's let's play out the scenario. Mm. Yeah. If uh, HH uh, lost to Fred maybe. Mm. And then HH says, uh, no, you've not, won, you've not won fairly, so we need to go for other elections. And then hypothetically, they cause a lot of chaos. Mm-hmm. Is Ed Galung one of those people that can get Membe and Ed Galung and the HH to sit them down and explain to them that mm. uh, no one of them is bigger than our country? Mm. Can Ed Galungu play that role that the bandit played? Let, let's suppose he was asked by one of them, like, come and mediate mm-hmm. how would they ask uh no sir we we have a, a conundrum uh, mm. this guy is saying that he can't hand over power okay yeah. okay and uh, but uh, the results show that i'm the one who won Uko. So- <laughs> 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 you got me there. 
<laughs> yeah, anyway, that shows me that we have a very bad leader in uh, Edgar Lungu. And if it all came down to voting for either HH and Edgar Lungu today, yeah. I would stay home. As I said before, I don't like encouraging this mm. because people need to vote. Voter apathy brings about a lot of things. One of the, the worst things it brings about is that the few individuals that are interested in voting will be the ones who will be ruling you. Yeah. Because, uh, and I'm saying those who are interested in voting because most of them you'll find that they are voting because it could benefit. Mm. They benefit themselves selfishly or personally, so Somehow, to say. Yeah. yeah. Those guys will be the ones who will be going to vote because they know that they are voting for themselves. Yeah. And then us who are on the fence who will stay away from voting. Mm. But also, even if we stay on the fence, the results will come out. Mm. So even if we are 20 million and only 1 million people vote and only 500,000 people uh, vote for the, rule, the, the, the winning candidate, mm. it will mean that 500,000 people decided the fate of the rest of the Zambians. Yeah. Even if you're on the fence, you can't you can't say no because of this and this and that. Then uh, there's nothing like that. Type the few people who are who have got a reason to vote will go and vote, and they will be we'll ruling. Decide, we'll decide for the rest, yeah. Exactly. And um, um, who, who's this man again? Uh, that's Tabo Kawana. He's the the Minister of Information and Media, Permanent Secretary. Yeah. So Mr. Kawana had some opinions. Uh, speaking, representing, or we should suppose he's representing the government in his, in his speaking, given his position. Uh, he supposed that Mr. Lungu would be legally liable for what he said. Yeah, suffice to mention that he didn't mention the name. Implied, implicit, <laughs> yeah, implicit yeah, speech. Yeah. To a former head of state only applies to the time that he held office and the activities he undertook during the time he or she held office. Any activities that are undertaken, undertaken beyond holding office, uh, such a person is liable and uh, is able to be taken on by the law. So if you commit an offense and you're a former president, you commit an offense after having left office, you will be treated like any other person that has committed an offense. You will be arrested and you will be prosecuted. Well, Mr. Kawana, Kawana, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, here are a few facts from the Constitution. To begin with, Article 98, Section 1 says, a person shall not institute or continue civil proceedings against the president or a person performing executive functions as provided in Article 109. So, without going further, the beginning of such a proceeding will not even take place. The institution of such a proceeding will not even take place. Now, as to whether this also applies to a president after he has left office, 